Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another episode of our fascinating and exciting series towards understanding Surah Yusuf. This is your host, Yasir Qadi. In our last episode, we had discussed the series of events that led to the imprisonment of Yusuf alayhi salam and the subsequent da'wah that he gave to the two people in the prison. In today's episode, we will begin our discussion from the king's palace and what transpired in the king's palace that allowed him and wanted him to communicate with Yusuf alayhi salam while he was in prison. Stay with us. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In our last episode, we had discussed the fact that the two prisoners had come to the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and asked the interpretation of their dreams. And he gave it to them after inviting them to Islam. In today's episode, we will talk about what happened after this and the story of the king and his dreams. And we notice the constant theme of dreams in Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf is a surah that has many, many dreams. It begins with a dream, it has a number of dreams in the middle, and it ends with the interpretation of the dreams. So as is our custom, we will begin with a recitation of the verses that we're going to explain. And today we will recite a rather longer uh, passage uh, from beginning from verse 42 all the way up to verse 53. Uh, Bismillah ta'ala, I ask my viewers to also try to open up the Qur'an and follow along with me. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa qala lil-lazhi zanna annahu najim minhu madhkurni inda rabbik فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٍ وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخر يابسات يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم إن كنتم للرؤيا تعبرون قالوا أضغاث أحلام وما نحن بتأويل الأحلام بعالمين وقال الذي نجا منهما وادكر بعد أمة أنا أنبئكم بتأويله فأرسلون يوسف أيها الصديق أفتنا في سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن, يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخر يابسات وأخر يابسات لعلي أرجع إلى الناس لعلهم يعلمون قال تزرعون سبع سنين دأبا فما حصدتم فذروه في سنبله إلا إلا قليلا مما تأكلون ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا إلا قليلا مما تحصنون 
ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون وقال الملك اتوني به فلما جاءه الرسول قال ارجع إلى ربك فاسأله ما بال النسوة فاسأله ما بال النسوة التي قطعن أيديهن إن ربي بكيدهن عليم قال ما خطبكن إذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه قلنا حاش لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك ليعلم أني لم أخنه بالغيب وأن الله وأن الله لا يهدي كيد الخائنين وما أبرئ نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا إلا ما رحم ربي إن ربي غفور رحيم So in these series of verses Yusuf alayhi salam, after interpreting the dream for his two fellow prisoners, he then tells one of them, وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُمَا He says to the one whom he presumed, i.e. he thought he knew, would be saved from the two of them. Remember, what was the dream? The dream was that one of them was pressing grapes to form wine. And the other one, he saw himself carrying a basket of bread, and the birds were eating from this basket. So he interpreted the dream and he said, this one, one of you, and look at the politeness, he didn't say which one, because one of them is going to face death. So he didn't say you are going to face death. He said one of you will eventually go back to his master and continue to press wine and make wine for him. And the other, he didn't mention who the name was because this is a matter of politeness. The other will be crucified. He didn't want to make it even worse than it appears. And he says the other will be crucified and the birds will eat from his flesh. The birds will eat from his face. This is the interpretation of the dream that the bread symbolized that the birds will be eating from his face. So one of them will be saved. So he said to the one whom he thought would be saved, Udhkurni inda Rabbik. Mention me to your master, i.e. the king. Now remember we said these were the servants of the king, right? So mention me to your king. Take my case to the king. Mention to him that I shouldn't be here. This is incorrect for me to be here. فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ So shaytan caused him to forget mentioning it to his lord. فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ So he remained a few years in jail. Now, there are two interpretations of this verse and both of them are uh, correct linguistically, but only one is obviously correct in terms of what actually happened. The first interpretation is as follows. And the reason why there's a difference of opinion is because the names are not mentioned, but rather pronouns are mentioned. He said to his Lord, who is the, the Lord? Who is the he? So the first opinion goes as follows. Yusuf said to the person who was going to be saved, the other prisoner, Mention my case, the case of Yusuf, to your master, meaning the king. فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ Shaytan caused this servant to forget to mention Yusuf's case to his master, the king. Shaytan caused this servant to forget to mention the matter to his king. So because of this, Yusuf remained there for a number of years. The second interpretation Yusuf told the man to go tell his master about his case. 
فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْ رَبِّهِ So this was incorrect. Yusuf should not have gone to the man. Shaytan caused Yusuf to forget to think of his Lord, i.e. Allah. So because of this, he remained in prison for many years. So the question arises, who was Shaytan targeting? Was it this servant, in which case the servant forgot to mention Yusuf's case to the king? Or was it Yusuf, in which case Yusuf relied on the servant instead of relying upon Allah? And Yusuf turned to the servant instead of turning to Allah. And so Shaytan caused Yusuf to forget mentioning his Lord. And because of that, Allah punished him by allowing him to remain in the prison for many years. Now, scholars have differed which of these two interpretations is correct. And inshaAllah ta'ala, the correct interpretation is the first one, not the second one. Why? Because there is absolutely nothing wrong to ask help from a person who is qualified to give you that help. There's nothing wrong in trying to defend yourself. There's nothing wrong in trying to get your case heard. And if this had been wrong, then it would have been wrong for Yusuf salam to defend his honor the first time. When he was accused of seducing the woman, he said, I didn't do it, she seduced me. So if it had been wrong, he wouldn't have done it the first time. There is absolutely nothing wrong in defending yourself and in trying to take legitimate and permissible means to arrive at the goal. So the correct opinion is that this man who was released from jail returned to the service of the king and he continued pressing wine for the king and as is the case with all men, when the good happens to you, when you get out of your problems and afflictions, you forget about your problem. You forget about those who helped you. And this is not appropriate and right. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever is not thankful to the people who helped him out, whoever is not thankful to his fellow men, it means he's not thankful to Allah. Why? Because these men who helped you, if you were in debt and they gave you money, if you were in any crisis and they helped you out, they were sent by Allah even if they didn't realize it. Allah Azza wa Jal was the one who provided them for you. So by thanking them, realizing Allah gave it to you, then you are in fact thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The true believer is grateful for every favor that a fellow human being does, but he realizes this ultimate favor is due to Allah, so the ultimate blessings have to be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Yusuf alayhi salam tried to get his case heard with the king directly. The ministers did what they did, and the king has no idea what happened, as is the case in all corrupt countries. Ministers have power to do things that are against the law and so they illegally jailed Yusuf. Yusuf alayhi salam did not deserve to be jailed. They illegally jailed Yusuf and they threw him in so now he's trying to get out. And he takes every permissible means and this shows us in our religion. We don't just sit back and let things happen. In our times we're facing a lot of problems, a lot of issues. We fight back in a legitimate way, not an illegitimate way. Legitimately we defend our rights according to the laws of the land. We stay within the laws of the land. Yusuf alayhi salam did not go beyond the laws of the land. He took recourse and he took action according with the laws of the land. And he asked this person, go mention my case to your king. But shaitan caused him to forget to mention this. And because of that, Yusuf remained in prison for a number of years. We'll take a short break now and we'll come right back and continue discussing the story from where we left off. Stay with us. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. Welcome back. We were right at the point where Yusuf alayhi salam told the fellow prisoner, mention me to your Lord. But the prisoner, your Lord here means the master of the, the prisoner, i.e. the king. But shaitan caused him to forget. And shaitan has many, many tactics. And one of the tactics of shaitan is that he causes you to forget. And the same tactic is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf as well, in another story. The story of Musa alayhi salam with his servant. When Musa tells his servant that when you see the sign of the fish going into the water, tell me. And Allah says, Shaytan caused him. مَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَ Allah says that this person who's, who was Yusha', the prophet after Musa, Yusha' said, who was at that time a young uh, lad, a young man, he said, it was Shaytan who caused me to forget. So forgetting 
something is one of the tactics of shaitan to cause you inconvenience, to cause you hassle, to cause you strife, whether you forget a religious obligation such as prayer. This is one of the tactics of shaitan. You genuinely forget it is time to pray. Now you are not sinful, but you need to make up the prayer as soon as you remember. Or even a worldly matter, such as in this case, where the man forgot to mention Yusuf to the king. So shaitan was the one who caused this in order to inconvenience Yusuf more in the prison. Therefore, realize that this is one of the tactics of shaitan to try to make you forget something. So because of this, Yusuf السلام, remained in prison سنين, a few years. The word bid'ah in Arabic could mean anywhere from three to nine. So most scholars interpret that Yusuf السلام, stayed around eight, nine years in prison. And remember, he entered the prison as a young man. So by the time he came out, he was probably in his uh, late 20s or, or early 30s. This is the rough estimate of the time age that he would have been in. So this prisoner returns to the palace of the king and he is freed from jail and he becomes the servant again and he continues to feed his master wine as was his custom before he entered prison. And many, many years later, as we said, probably around seven, eight years later, the king sees a very strange dream. What was the dream of the king? The king saw that seven fat cows were being eaten by seven thin ones. And he saw seven grains of corn that were full. And he saw seven grains of corn that were withered away and shriveled up. And he kept on seeing this dream. And he knew that it meant something because as we said, one of the signs of a dream from Allah is that it remains in your memory, fresh and powerful. And you have a feeling that there is something symbolic here. So he called a council of his ministers and he said to all of them, this is what I have seen. Aftuni fi ru'yaya. Explain to me my dream in kuntum lir ru'ya ta'burun. If you are able to interpret dreams. So he's trying to taunt them. Do you even have this knowledge? Do you know how to explain this dream? So they responded back to him, qalu adghathu ahlam. They said, these aren't dreams. These are jumbled up nightmares. Notice he called it ru'ya and they called it hulum or ahlam. He called it a dream and they called it the plural, nightmares. In other words, they're trying to basically show that this is not a real dream that you have seen. You have just seen something else. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not a big deal. But when he announced this in the large gathering of famous ministers of all of his, of his, of his people around him, right there present was also the person who gave him his wine. The very person who was freed from jail along with Yusuf. And so, وَقَالَ الَّذِي نَجَا مِنْهُمَا the one who was saved from those two. And he remembered after a long time. He remembered the whole story. And as we said, this is the nature of man. That when something evil happens to you, you don't think about it. You don't want to ponder about it. When something good happens to you, you overlook the one who gave you that good. You forget about it. And you forget the state that you were in, in the state of evil. So this person basically covered up his memory, shaitan caused him to do so, until the king jarred that memory, until the king saw a dream, and he remembered, this was the one who also interpreted a dream. So, وَقَالَ الَّذِي نَجَى مِنْهُمَا وَدَّكَرَ بَعْدَ أُمَّةٍ أَنَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِتَأْوِيلِهِ فَأَرْسِلُونَ he, he told the king, I will, I will interpret it, so allow me leave to go. Give me permission to take the day off, and find out the interpretation of this dream. Notice he said, I will inform it of you. In other words, he wanted to get some favor from the king. He wanted to become famous. And such is the way with all people who lack true humility and iman, they want to take the credit for themselves. Even though it was Yusuf who was going to tell him. He didn't say that I will bring somebody who will tell you. Rather he said, I will tell you of his interpretation, so send me. So he rushes back to the prison that he was saved from, that he occupied for many years. He rushes back to that jail and he says, the king has sent me, allow me to go in. I need to speak to this prisoner. And he says, Yusuf, ayyuh siddiq Oh Yusuf, you noble man. Oh Yusuf, you truthful person. No apologies, no introduction, no nothing. Immediately he jumps in and he begins by buttering Yusuf up, by praising him. Oh Yusuf, you noble man. Give me the interpretation. Aftina. Tell us what does it mean? في سبع بقرات سمان Seven fat cows يأكلهن سبع عجاف That are being eaten up by seven thin cows. Seven thin cows 
are eating up seven fat cows. وَسَبْعِ سُمْبُولَاتٍ خُضْرٍ And seven lush grains of corn. وَأُخَرَ يَابِسَاتٍ And seven very dry ones. لَعَلِّ أَرْجِعُ إِلَى النَّاسِ He says, I want to go back to the people. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ So that they can tell, we can tell them what happens. So, he doesn't even say who the dream is from. He doesn't now want to give it away. Still, this middleman wants to try to get the information from Yusuf, go back to the king and become famous himself. And amazingly, Yusuf السلام, gives him what he wants. He doesn't reprimand him. He doesn't say, did you mention me to your king? What is the matter? Look at the patience of Yusuf السلام. He explains the dream and he interprets it immediately without criticizing the man, without questioning him, without any hint of being angry. Why are you coming to me now after you have abandoned me? Why should I help you out when you didn't help me out? No, this is not the character of Yusuf السلام. He says immediately, قَالَ تَزْرَعُونَ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ دَأَبًا He said, you will harvest your grain for seven years. دَأَبًا means like you were used to, as was your custom. For seven years you will continue this very custom that you used to do. فَمَا حَصَدْتُمْ فَذَرُوهُ فِي سُنْبُلِهِ Whatever you harvest from the grain, from the crops, all of this corn, leave it in its outer shell. Leave it there. إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تَأْكُلُونَ Except for a little bit that you have to eat. The rest of it, leave it stored. And then he said, ثُمَّ يَعْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ Then they will come after this سَبْعٌ شِدَادٌ Seven very very tough years Years of drought So after seven consecutive years of harvesting They will be followed by seven years of drought يَأْكُلْنَ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ لَهُنَّ They will eat up all that you have stored إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تُحْسِنُونَ Except for a little bit of what you had preserved ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ عَامٌ And then there will come one year فِيهِ يُغَاثُ النَّاسُ وَفِيهِ يَعْصِرُونَ A lot of rain will fall. It will be a very bountiful year and they will be, have so much produce they will even be able to produce wine from it which is a luxury item. You don't have to eat the food, you don't have to take the grains uh, or, the, or the grapes, you can even produce wine from it. Notice here a number of points. Firstly, as we said, the patience of Yusuf alayhi salam. And this patience is so marvelous that even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was amazed at it. He said, I am amazed at the patience of Yusuf. Ajibtu. I am amazed and astonished at how patient Yusuf is. This is our Prophet sallallahu speaking. He said, I am amazed at the patience of Yusuf alayhi salam. When the man came back to him, I would not have given him that information. This is our Prophet speaking. I would not have given him that information until I put a condition that they release me from jail. This is our Prophet ﷺ speaking. And this is what all of us would also have done. And he says, I am amazed at how patient he was that after languishing in jail, it must be now over 10 years he has been in jail after the interpretation of the dream. Because remember, the dream was interpreted after he entered jail. And then after that, another seven years. So he's remaining in jail for almost a decade for not having done any crime. And the man comes back and no questions. He gives him the interpretation of the dream. Secondly, what is even more amazing, not only does he interpret the dream, he gives them a solution to the problem. Now Yusuf salam was not asked for a solution. The man didn't say, what should we do in terms of the crisis? No. The man said, what does the dream mean? Yusuf interpreted it, and not only did he interpret it, he told them what to do. Look at the gentle nature. Look at the kind character of this Prophet of Allah. That he wants good for them. And they are not even Muslims by the way. But he wants good because they are his fellow men. He wants good because these are the people that he is living amongst. So he wants good for them. So he tells them, I will tell you what to do. For seven years, when you harvest your crops, then don't get rid of it. Don't plant it. Rather, store it away. Keep it for the future. Then, you will except for the portion you will have to eat. Then you will be followed by seven years of drought, seven years of difficulty. These will eat up the seven years of produce. And this is the interpretation of the seven cows eating, the seven thin cows eating the seven fat cows. The seven fat cows represent the harvest for that year. Fat and plump 
lots of rain. And the seven thin cows represent seven years of no rain. So the seven years of no rain will eat up the produce of the seven years of bountiful produce. So the seven years of drought will eat up the seven years before it. And this is the interpretation of the dream. Now, an interesting question arises. Okay, we understand the symbolism here of the seven fat cows meaning seven years of, of full grain and the seven thin cows meaning seven years of drought and of course the seven full blossoming corn and the seven withered corn rep represents the same thing. But where did Yusuf السلام, get the one year after the seven? He said, and then there will come a year, there will be much water and much uh, rain and you will actually be able to produce wine. Where did this one year come from? And this shows us the insight of Yusuf السلام, after seven years of drought. In order for seven years of drought to be washed away, you must be flooded with a deluge of rain. Extra rain must come to wipe away seven years of drought. So this is what Yusuf السلام, infers from the dream even though the dream does not mention it explicitly, he says after these seven years of drought, there will come a year where there will be plenty of rain. So much so, you will even be able to produce wine from it. And this brings us to the conclusion of today's episode. Insha'Allah ta'ala, in our next episode, we will continue explaining these very verses that we have recited. I hope to see you then. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى وهدى ورحمة لقوم 